Yes, YouTube, welcome back to another video and thanks for joining me. So in today's video, we're going to be making a start on the Fire Belly Toad Paladarium behind me. And we're going to be trying to work out how the waterfall and the water side of things are going to work. And I'm going to be making the waterfall out of a box of chocolates. So if you want to know a little bit more about that, then make sure you don't go anywhere. And that's all coming up right after this. And welcome back. So for those who haven't been following along what's been going on recently, so this is um, a new Exoterra 45, 45 by 45 centimeter um, paludarium slash terrarium. So we've got one of these in this room, which is housing my five belly toads, some white cloud mountain minnows and some blue dream shrimp. Now this is one of the longest setups I've had and I made this before I started YouTube. I get a lot of questions on this setup. And I thought this was a great opportunity that we've got another chance to try and build something similar so you can see how I do that firstly. But this paludarium isn't for me, it's for my father-in-law, so it won't be stayed unfortunately. But I'm keen to try and iron out some of the things I would have changed from the first build. So it's probably going to be hard to part with this one and leave this one here. But I still love the Fire Belly Toad paludarium that we have here with our Fire Belly Toads. And there's some changes on that to come. So if you're not subscribed to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell as well. If you want to catch up on all the bioactive setups, I've got a ball python one coming up very soon as well. And if you enjoy fish, like I can see the fish tank behind me, we also do a lot of aquascaping content as well. So don't miss out. But I think what we need to do first is get this unwrapped, give it a water change, uh, give it a water change, add some water and do a water test on it just to make sure there's no leaks. And then we'll try and work out the filtration. So let's go. Okay, so we got it filled up now. We made a little bit of a mess with the water, but never mind. But it's always the best thing to do with any aquarium, terrarium, paludarium, anything that's gonna hold water, always water test it. I've never had one that's leaked, but I can guarantee after you spent all that money and time, you will have a leak. So, always best to do this. Plus, I need to fill it up to test out how we're gonna use the water system anyway. So over on my Fire Belly Toad paludarium, I've got an internal filter in there. And for those who follow the channel, you'll know I moan about that quite a lot. Um, because there is a pain in the backside to get out. Um, I have to disrupt the system, so I'd like to have an external canister filter on here. Plus, this isn't going to be mine, so I need to be mindful. It needs to be quite user-friendly as well. So I'm going to try something different today, and in the intro we talked about using a box of chocolate. So, not to do a forest gun, but here's one I prepared earlier. So yeah, I had to battle through and eat all these chocolates. But what I thought was, we could use this as a little reservoir. So we could potentially stick that to the back of the enclosure. I'm probably going to drill some holes in the top for the outflow so we can always access this. And what I thought was to maybe cut a slit here or here, depending on where we're going to have the waterfall. Um, and then they could fill up and trickle out slowly. So I know when I built these in the past, knowing that I'm going to keep them myself, it doesn't really matter. I can always change the pumps and things if they're too powerful. But when you just have it coming directly from the from the water pump, it can sometimes be a bit too powerful and it looks unnatural the way it comes out. So I thought if we can fill that up, 
Plus there might be an extra space for some biological filtration as well, depending on how this works. So we're gonna try and do this without breaking it and cut some holes in it. And what I'll do for the time being is probably glue it with some hot glue to the back just so we can test this out and just make sure the filter works with it. So we're gonna be using a Awaze Filter Smart 60. So it's an external canister filter, the smallest one they do in that range. So we're gonna give that a go. Hopefully it'll be better for any fish or any frogs that are gonna live in here for beneficial bacteria. So, trial run, let's give it a go. Okay, so the first time I tried something like this and it went pretty well to be honest. I managed to cut a nice slit out of it without cracking the container. I just drilled the corners then to release the bit in the middle. So hopefully now we'll stick it to the back of the tank, the back obviously not the front like this, and then hopefully the water, we might need to put a little spout or something, but then hopefully we can create the waterfall running through the enclosure then rather than this squirting out at pace. So we're going to glue this to the back now, let that dry quickly because I would silicone it but it'll take ages to dry and we've got the tank full now and then we'll test out the filter and see if it works. Okay, so that worked a treat. Not very often you try something new and it works first time, so I'm a bit shiny, it's quite hot. Um, but I think that was a success, so it managed to cut the little slot out of the container, that was quite easy enough. Obviously the hot glue was holding that in place, even with the weight of the water, but obviously we're gonna foam around that, add extra support. Probably gonna need to add maybe a lip onto the, um, where the slot is, just so it flows down normally. But I just need to think now about how I want this to look in terms of the expanding foam and the hardscape. Now I might run maybe more than one stream through this this time, but obviously we can have a land area as well. But I think we're off to a good start. The Filter Smart 60 worked a treat. And any of the materials or the items I've used in today's video, as always, I'll leave a link down in the description. Bellies are getting on really well. But obviously, we do have a sick five belly toad who's being quarantined, and I'm looking to introduce her back very soon. But this is the tank we're looking to replicate. Now, this is our chance to grow in over years, and we've tinkered with it along the way. Now, I'll leave the list of the five belly toad playlist down in the description as well if you want to go and check that out and catch up on what's been going on. But now that I've managed to test the filter out on this tank, I'm probably going to implement the same sort of system onto this one. Obviously, not with the chocolate box, but we will add a canister filter on here. And I'll probably use the 60 as well because it doesn't need a heater. The only other thing that will change about this tank is I am looking to upgrade the lighting and try and do something about that because I think the aquatic plants are not probably getting the best light at the moment. Um, as it is at the moment, it's probably best is not because it's summertime and all the tanks are struggling to stay algae free with the heat, so lots of water changes, but everything's going on okay. But I think with the new enclosure now, I'm really excited to get going on doing the expanding foam, plan out the hardscape and the layout because that is, let's face it, one of the best bits. Obviously, but then we'll have a look at planting, so as well as um, threshold plants, we'll look at aquatic plants as well. 
and we do have some five belly tours lined up ready to go from this uh, friend of the channel tim from tim reptile as well so hopefully we'll get this wrapped up very soon and delivered off to his rightful owner but i just want to say massive thanks for checking out this video today if you want to do any more to support the channel obviously watching liking commenting is a massive help to me but if you want to go and check out my merch you can grab a john's rainforest room t-shirt or any t-shirts around aquascaping bioactive setups reptiles amphibians there'll be something for you any of the proceeds I get go straight back into the channels to make animals' lives better and improve on the filming quality of these videos. But as I mentioned earlier, loads of aquascaping coming up, loads of bioactive setups, as well as plenty more. So make sure you are subscribed and I'll catch you in the next video.